Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is counterintuitive, but get used to it, guys. The Atlantic is on the west and the Pacific is on the east of Panama. And if you doubt that, get on a globe and look it up. Okay. So Panama City, that's where I flew in and out of down here. Gamboa is kind of the midpoint in the canal. The Chagres River is what feeds the thing in. And the Chagres River was why the French plan of making a sea level canal could never have worked because there would have been way too much water coming into the canal. So the Chagres River now is the only river in the world that flows to two oceans because of course the water heads both directions out through Gatun here and, and out of uh, uh, the locks of Panama City. Now this is, this is interesting here because the Gatun locks uh, over on the uh, Northwest side, this is um, a larger shot of it. The original locks at Gatun are three steps and they're double locks. And since then, uh, in 2016, uh, through a big Italian project, they opened new, much larger locks. They didn't change the canal, but they just changed, added locks uh, on, the, on the Atlantic side here. And then on the Pacific side, over here near Panama City, here's a larger version here. Uh, in the old lock system, there's a, a single step at Pedro Miguel. And it's about two miles to a double step at Miraflores, and then you're all the way down. But they, with the new locks, they bring you all the way in at the maximum height, and then there are three steps in the new locks there. The old locks could handle ships with up to 5,000 TEUs, 20 foot equivalent units. The new locks, when I was there, they handled a ship at 15,000, triple capacity. Here's the uh, kind of the pro profile of the whole thing. 26 meters above sea level, 85 feet. And then down here, this, this little dotted line is the continental divide. And that's where the Gaillard cut is. That was the biggest problem they had in the canal was finding the angle of repose because they had constant slides into it. Other than that, this canal was perfect out of the box. The original cement in the locks, the original lock doors, everything else, it opened and away it went. They never had to go back and redo anything. At the time I was there, uh, Panama City was reputed to be third in the world after New York and Chicago for the number of skyscrapers. Hmm. After Panama got the canal, so much money poured into the country. Uh, everybody built buildings, everybody bought cars, and they haven't caught up on infrastructure. It's the worst traffic jams I've seen anywhere. This is a very interesting building. Uh, Every floor has access to four gardens on the roof of the floors below. Mm. What they're doing here was they'd have a big roundabout of major streets up above, and then they'd take another major street and tunnel underneath it so they could keep the traffic moving. In the old town of Pan Panama, they're interested in uh, uh, restoring the old buildings and uh, in situations where they don't have enough money to do it now, they at least reinforce them so they won't collapse. So we saw quite a bit of that. This is nothing more than a facade, but you can see that they put temporary shores, shoring in there to hang on to it. That one doesn't need it. And uh, there's one that's been restored. This is inside one of the churches. It's all covered in gold leaf. And word has it that back in colonial times when there are pirates running around, uh, they, uh, the citizens of Panama City covered the whole thing in tar so the bad guys wouldn't know it had any value. I don't know what that tree is, but you see them all over Central America and Cuba. This is interesting. Looking down into the old town, you see this bridge out here. I'll show you what they did. They had to build a highway right through Old Town. So instead, they built a bridge to go all the way around it. Mm. Now we're at the Miraflores lock. Uh, this is the, uh, you can see there, there are two locks. This is the upper level. This is the lower level of the lock here. Where'd I go? Yeah, okay. 
Now I've turned to the right and we're looking upstream. This is Miraflores Lake. And up here about two miles away is Pedro Miguel Lock. And that takes the ships up to the full height. These ships up here are at the full height. And that is about four miles away. That's the Centennial Bridge. That was only the second bridge across the canal and it was only open in 2004. Oh, wrong way. Now we've turned to the left, we're looking down. This is open to the ocean down here. This is the lower level of the locks. This swing bridge uh, was the only bridge across the canal from the time the canal opened until, I think it was 1962 when they built the bridge at Panama City. That was for the exclusive use of the US Army. Ordinary <laughs> citizens, the only way they could get across was a ferry. Now here we're at Miraflores Lock, but look at that ship up there. That's in the uh, heading into the new lock. So he's at the full 85 feet above sea level height. These are the mules, electric locomotives that tow the ships through the old locks. And uh, they're on cogs, which is interesting. Uh, they're on rails here, but they're also on cogs. But then they have other sideways wheels that grip underneath this so that if a ship lurches, it won't pull the mule off the track and into the water. This is a, an aerial view, which obviously I didn't take. Um, there's the Centennial Bridge up there. There's Pedro Miguel. These are Miraflores locks over here. That building right there is where I was taking the pictures. Then these are the new locks with three steps. The problem they were gonna have is that so much water would be discharged as ships came downbound through there that they would lower the level of the lakes. So what they did was they engineered it so that 60% of the water is dumped into these holding ponds. And then when upbound ships are coming up, they suck water out of those ponds back into the locks. So 60% of the water can be recycled. There's a little schematic that shows how the thing works. You know, they fill the far pond first, and then fill the next, and fill the next. Panama Canal Railway. Can anybody guess what American railway they might have been affiliated with? <laughs> <laughs> when I was there, they had two kinds of locomotives, SD60s and F40s. Is it still, two is kinds of rolling stock, passenger cars and container cars. Is it, Craig, is it still partially owned by KCS? I believe it is. So they're the operator. Yep. Uh, when KCS took it over, it was a big deal because they had to re-gauge it from five feet to uh, four foot eight and a half. Okay. It was built at five feet. This is at Colon over on the, uh, the northwest uh, end on the Atlantic side. And you can see the crane rookery in the background there. Uh, if you've got a ship coming in, that's got containers that's bound for multiple ports, rather than pay the toll and go through the canal, it may be appropriate to dump all the containers, put them on the train, and then reallocate them to various ships on the other end. Now we're at the, uh, um, at the locks on the Atlantic side overlooking, and here the, uh, the old locks are off in the distance. We can't see them, but this is the upper part of the new locks. These are called the uh, Agua Clara locks. And you can see the gates rather than folding like this, like they do on the old one, they simply go straight across. And here you can see the three levels all the way down and the catch basins over here on the side. They were starting when I was there to build a bridge across at the Atlantic side. Before that bridge, if you were on the wrong side at the Atlantic side, you had an over 100 mile drive to get to the other side. Had to mm -hmm. drive way back to the Continental Divide and go across on that uh, on that uh, Centennial Bridge. But the new bridge has been completed and there's what it looks like. Now we are at the, uh, at the Agua Clara locks on the Atlantic side. This ship is, bound, uh, is headed for the Atlantic and that one is coming into the new locks because it's obviously way too big for the old locks. In fact, just as, a, as, as a, an aside, uh, you probably all know that the big battleships that the Japanese built were bigger than the American battleships. And the reason the American battleships were the size they were is they were constrained by the Panama Canal. They had to be able to negotiate 
two oceans. The Japanese didn't care about the Panama Canal, so they built their ships even larger. But apparently it was a, you know, a couple of slips of paper between the uh, ship and the walls of the Panama Canal when the battleship Missouri and those of that same class would go through. And Craig, another useless did a, a bit of trivia. The next series of battleships after the Iowa's, they actually considered rebuilding the canal so they that could right? take bigger ones. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but that was all stopped because then the carriers became the right. new you know, master ship of the oceans, you know? Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So I, sorry, go ahead. Now this is at Gamboa. Uh, this ship is, is um, westbound. He's headed for the Atlantic. This is the Chagres River, which is, is the main feeder for the canal. And uh, this hotel in the rainforest, that's where we stayed for a couple of days. So I could walk down to the canal in my spare time. I'd get up early in the morning and head down to the canal, see what was going on down there. Here I'm at the canal. This uh, ship is headed toward the Atlantic. This picture I had found long before I went down there. I had seen that on railpictures.net. And I had no idea where it was, but there it is. There's the bridge. <laughs> it only has a single lane for automobiles. Yeah. Uh, this is not the main road across the isthmus. There's another highway that's farther north than that that goes across. But uh, how's your Spanish? Espera aquí para señal. Wait here for the signal. Single track of the railroad. But here's what kind of condition the bridge is in. Bridge closed for maintenance from 9.30 to noon, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm. And as I was heading back up, I heard the horn blow and there they came, headed back, headed across. Come on, there we go. Get a load of that. When I was, uh, Doing my research to put this together, I found that that occurred in uh, May. This was a Cypriot bulk carrier that lost control coming past the Chagres River and it took down that bridge. So it did a nice job of severing the rail connection across the continent. Uh, the bridge was back in service in October. Okay, now oh, the cut. On, what's that? Mm. A Gilliard cut. Yeah, no kidding. And this is where they had all the trouble with landslides. You see, it's been nicely terraced now at this point. They put us on a small uh, tourist tourist boat to head uh, east down toward uh, toward uh, the Pacific. This is the Centennial Bridge, opened in 2004. There's a stock picture of it. As we were going through the lock, these two sailboats were there and they were Australian. Would you want to sail one of those boats from Panama to Australia? Mm. Not for me. And it was hot and it was humid and we had to wait and wait and wait while this thing came into the locks with us. It took us a long time to get through those locks. Now we're coming out the bottom level here of the Miraflores locks into uh, salt water. Now this is the bridge that was, this was the first bridge that the public could use across the canals built in 1962. It's called the, uh, uh, well, come on, what is it called? <laughs> Centennial Bridge, oh, called the Bridge of the Americas. And that bridge is going from south to north. But if you want to drive to the United States, you have to cross this way and go <laughs> south and go all the way around. So um, this is the new bridge that they're we'll, contemplating. We'll do, it. We'll, we'll do part two next time. These are all ships waiting to get into the canal. And they said, it's not like a restaurant. It's like a movie theater. You pay before you go in. These are indigenous people. We got to uh, see them in their village and buy some handicrafts from them. They were all real close. I actually took that picture of <clears throat> monkeys in the in the forest around there and all kinds of Panama City again, all the skyscrapers. There's old Balboa himself. 